new. It's bigger and better. It's back. It's gospel time. Ability. And a new face to drive the season. It's new. It's bigger and better. It's back. It's gospel time. Carnivari! 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 No one among them worshipped him. They were following him. Why do you follow him? Why do you obey his word? Now out of the crowd, when many imagine, the Bible calls him is the leader of the synagogue. is a church elder for that matter. He's a senior man in the church came to Jesus. I believe he was not the only one who was the leader. There were many leaders there. I believe he's not the one that was a Christian. They are all Jews. So they had their religion. But among them came a man with a different opinion. The Bible says when he came to Jesus, he fell at his feet. A sign of worship. A sign of what? Worship. So this ruler came to Jesus and the Bible says when he saw him. Which means he was looking for him. Jesus was in the crowd. So when the man came, all these people, the, the woman and this man, they were looking for Jesus in the crowd. And when they saw Jesus, they behaved different from the crowd. Jairus did not see the crowd. He did not come to see the crowd. He came to see Jesus. Jairus came to see who? Jesus. He didn't come to see the crowd. The crowd was there. And the crowd had no solution for him. He knew one man who carried a solution for his child. And that is the one he came for. Came to see Jesus. And I pray that every time you come to the congregation of, the, of worshippers, you will be seeking Christ. Amen. We come to seek who? Christ. Students, we come to seek who? Christ. So we are all here to seek Christ. We are all here to seek Jesus. The Bible says, whoever seeketh him will find. You cannot find him if you don't seek him. Why does the Bible say, and this man, when he saw him, where were the rest? They didn't see him. Yes, wa rikuwa katikati yao, wanamuskuma tu. Wanaona ni muenzao. But this guy coming, he saw him. When he saw him, he realized this is not an ordinary man. Amen. This man has an answer for my life. Amen. The Bible says he knelt and worshipped him. Now I want you to see after this man kneeling before Jesus, what begins to happen. You cannot worship God in fruit and spirit. And God never intervene in your life. Before God intervenes, you must worship Him. Worship provokes divine intervention. Worship provokes divine intervention. Worship provokes divine intervention. If you want 
divine intervention. Even when you are going through hard times, you are alone in your house. Learn to worship. You will experience what I call divine intervention. Amen. There are times you cannot even pray, but you can open your mouth and tell God, I worship you. You are worthy to be glorified. You give him glory. You worship him. You adore him. You will see God visiting you in a way you have expected. Amen. So if you want divine intervention, be a worshiper. Worship God even when things are not working the way you wanted them to work. Worship God even when you are down. Worship God even when you are on the hospital bed. Lift your voice and tell him, God, I bless your name because even when I'm down, I will still be up. Amen. Worship provokes divine intervention. Amen. So when this man worshiped Jesus, that's number 23. And he besought him, saying, My little daughter lied at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and shall live. Praise God. Now, there is a procedure of going in God's presence. The procedure of going in God's presence begins with the worship. You do not begin by asking, you begin by worship. Hallelujah. The Bible says, even before you open your mouth to pray, he knows what you need. So you begin by worship. After he has knelt before Christ and worshipped him, now he begins to tell Christ the problems he is encountering. You cannot access heaven with pride. You access heaven with humility. And what makes a man humble is worship. It's not praise. But when it comes to worship, it is personal. Kira mutu anaenda na bene ya mungu kuringana na vile mawasiriano yake na mungu. Tawana wengine wanalia, tawana wengine wanacheka. Amen. Mambo ya worship ni mambo ya mtu na Mungu. Kama uja connect na Mungu itakuwa ngumu. Ndio maana uweze kulazimisha mtu ku worship. Kama mtu hajakutana na Mungu, worship inakuwa ngumu. Mtu akikutana na Mungu worship inakuwa rahisi. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Akianza kuabudu Mungu, anaabudu Mungu in the flow of the spirit. You don't struggle. You flow in the spirit. You flow in the spirit of worship. You flow in the spirit of prayer. You cannot be told now it's time for prayer no. It's time for praise no. You flow in the spirit. Can I an amen? So it's important to understand that worship is the key of opening heavens. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you do not worship Him, you can dance, you can praise, you can do everything. But if you do not worship Him, something is missing in your life.
So this man coming to Jesus and told Jesus, my daughter is sick to the point of dying. I pray that you come and lay your hands on her and she will be healed. I'm asking a question when I was making my studies, I was asking myself, was this the only man that a child had a problem? 